Hey, what's up folks, this is GK. So if you have looked at some of the use cases that you find in Google Cloud Professional Architect, you will see there are a lot of questions on Bigtable and BigQuery. And it's also quite confusing for a lot of people which one to choose in the options. So today in this video, I'm going to cover some of the concepts of Bigtable versus BigQuery from the exams perspective. So it's not going to be a completely technical deep dive of Bigtable or BigQuery but the things that you want to remember whenever you are trying to uh, prepare for the exam uh, but also in general what you would choose and what is the right thing to choose when you are you know designing a solution all right so with that aside let's get started so let's start with the big table so big table is a database right so and it can handle terabytes and petabytes of data with very low latency so any requirement or anything that you see in the exam that talks about a live database that can handle petabytes of data, you know, or terabytes of data with very low latency. And if you see Bigtable as an option, then you have to choose that. So this is more suitable for applications that are highly scalable. Now, let's say you have a e-commerce website, you want to give some insights to the users on the fly when user is trying to select something. The scale is the biggest worry for you. So that's when you choose uh, Bigtable. And you can also call it as sort of a OLTP. It's not necessarily an OLTP completely, but it's more like an OLTP where you can do reads and writes at a very high scale. And the most important thing to remember is that the big table is on a NoSQL architecture. So you cannot write your queries on a big table and it's not a relational database, but let's say your use case or uh, if somebody would ask you, I want to choose a relational database with massive data and with a highly scalability, requirement and stuff then you would choose uh, you know a cloud spanner or something else but not bigtable so this is the most important thing to remember and bigtable was also used in google search maps and gmail i guess also in youtube so google has made it as a part of the solution in the google cloud so that now uh, a general a consumer can also use uh, this very good solution so if you were to relate this with some other tool then you would choose uh, hbase or uh, cassandra that's an equivalent a solution you can also call it as like big table is a managed solution of cassandra in google cloud though the technology and everything is different but i'm just saying for the sake of reference so i hope now you got the concepts of big table the most important thing to remember in this slide is it's a live database and these are the main keywords that you want to remember it's a live database and if the requirement is very low latency terabytes and petabytes of data then then you would choose a uh, big table and of course, if the requirement is NoSQL as well. Okay, so now let's look at some of the common use cases that you see in uh, Bigtable. So you would choose Bigtable for a time series data or financial data, IOTs or fraud detection and uh, recommendation engines. Because if you look at all these use cases and the common pattern is that they have massive amount of data in their uh, use cases. So that's why it is more useful for these use cases. And uh, if you're using for less data, then it's going to be very expensive and it's not worth it to invest in Bigtable. I'm also going to go over one sample use case that I found in the Google documentation that can easily highlight you the differences between a Bigtable and a BigQuery so that you will not be confused when, whenever you're facing that question in the exam. So now let's talk about uh, BigQuery. So BigQuery is more like a query engine you know, for data sets. So you have huge amount of data sets, like you have the same like petabytes or terabytes of data that is lying out there. And now you want to do a full table scans on that. And you want to look at the data in a perspective and analyze the data. So that's when you would use BigQuery. So the word analyze is an important keyword to note here because this is the one that can help you to choose the right option if you were presented in the exam or if you go through the use cases of IOTs or anything. So if there was a query both on BigQuery and Bigtable, you would know which one to choose based on the keyword analyze. But also I'm going to give you some other important things that you have to remember. All right, so the, so the BigQuery in short is to analyze uh, the data than to use as a live database. So BigQuery is completely serverless. So meaning that if you go to Google Cloud now, you can just create a BigQuery and you just create a data set. That's all. You don't have to do anything. It's completely managed at the back end. You're charged based on the data that has been extracted, but you're not charged on the storage 
I think the storage is very less expensive, but in general, the querying is where you're going to pay more. And the key difference between Bigtable and BigQuery is, I said, I've said like, you know, Bigtable is sort of o, uh, OLTP, but BigQuery is more suitable for OLAP. It's more suitable for your business analysis and stuff um, where you have the data that you want to create dashboards on, build analytical reports on. So that's when you would use BigQuery. And to give you a very simple example, let's say you want to analyze your logs, you know, uh, your Stackdriver logs or Google Cloud logging solution. And you want to analyze the logs for last one year and you want to find how many issues that you found in the logs and you want to improve on that. So what you would do is you would create a pipeline from uh, sending the data from your logs to BigQuery uh, through a sync, uh, which I have demonstrated in one of my video. And then you would create dashboards on that to analyze the data and see what is happening with your logs for the last one, one year. So it's more like a data warehousing solution that is used to understand the data and analyze the data for the future and see what you want to do. And that's when you will see most of the use cases around the BigQuery are more of the analysis part. Uh, the other thing to note before I go into the SQL based queries part is in the BigQuery, you would keep appending the data. You would not like, you know, update the data. So that's not the way you're going to use BigQuery. So BigQuery is more like you will keep appending the data. Uh, if you want to make modifications, you would just append the data and then you would run queries on that. So you, you cannot go back like a normal database and do your update operations. On BigQuery, you can run your normal SQL based queries. So this is a huge advantage. Uh, whenever you, if you are familiar with uh, SQL, then you can, you can run SQL queries and, the, and get the data from BigQuery. And it's immutable. That's what I was talking about, where you're going to just append the data. You're not going to modify the data in BigQuery. So the best example, if you want to relate a BigQuery to any other solution in cloud is Redshift from AWS. It's also a data warehousing solution. So now the common use cases in the BigQuery are these, and you can see these use cases on the Google uh, website as well. If you see all these use cases, again, you will see that the word analysis is more common in these, like for example, UPS uses BigQuery to achieve precise package volume forecasting. So they are analyzing the data and they are forecasting the volume of the company. Similarly, here the major league baseball is expanding its fan base with personalized immersive experiences. So they have huge amount of data and they want to analyze and see what they want to build for their fans, how they want to build personalized, uh, you know, things for the fans. And the same way Home Depot is also stocking their stores. And this is, uh, I think, a common thing that you would see in in the use case that we have discussed previously as well i think it, it was terra earth yeah in the terra earth use case you must have seen that uh, you know the company wanted to restock the stuff and they want to build it ready so that whenever uh, the vehicles are coming into the uh, into the shop they do not want to keep the vehicles for longer period of time and that's where they were they were using the bigquery as well to analyze the data so now let's look at a sample use case this is for for an ad tech you would use a cloud big table as a database, but you can see the reason why I have selected this use case is that it has both events, the real time events that you would like to collect and store. And also you're using BigQuery here for analytics. So this is the perfect example and the use case, and it's also there on the Google site, a documentation site. And this gives you the perfect difference between a big table versus BigQuery. All right. So, I hope this video helps you to clear the confusion whenever you are presented with an option of choosing Bigtable versus BigQuery in the exam. And now I hope that you will choose the right option uh, whenever you see that. And let me know in the comment section if you find this video helpful and give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.